I've just bought this pub and I don't really know what I'm going to do with it. So we're going to go through on some ideas, some of the issues that we've got and see how it pans out. So this pub actually came up for sale about three years ago and I've been negotiating with the vendor for that long and uh, I actually knew him uh, before he was even interested in selling it. So he contacted me because um, he was thinking about putting it on the market and didn't really know what it was worth, but obviously he wanted a pretty penny for it. Now, one of the real reasons for buying this pub was to stop someone else buying it, because I've got a trading pub literally 30 meters down the road. So if someone else was to buy this, they would open it up and they would nick all my trade. So first and foremost, it was a great way to block anyone nicking all of my pub trade. Now, where we are on this street, we're full of residential terraced houses. There's literally no other commercial and it's not a through road, so it's a really quiet road. So we think there isn't a need for a commercial building in this location. So that gives us a massive opportunity to see if we can convert it to residential. Now, such an iconic looking building mixed in with all these old Victorian terraces and all of these new build flats. So it's ripe for residential conversion but it actually sticks out like a sore thumb. But for the right reasons, it's a fantastic looking building. And even though we're not in a conservation area, it's actually locally listed. So we probably would never get planning permission to knock it down. But that doesn't mean that there isn't a huge amount of potential within this project. Just looking at the position where it is, so we're on the main road, but there's also another road that runs sort of adjacent to the plot. Now this is going to be crucial because this property has a little bit of a cherry on top which is an unused bowling green which in this location gives us a huge opportunity to build either flats or houses. So all of this front garden space here, pub garden, is actually crucial to making this project work because where we are on this road where there is no off street parking, any planning permission that we try and get is going to be crucial to show them that we can provide off-street parking so we don't add to the congestion. So you'd think that this area here represents a huge amount of car parking space but we're going to probably leave this wide open because it leads down to our cherry on top which is the bowling green. Now just looking around what we've got around us we're set back from the main street but we're within the vicinity of these newer blocks of flats. So this area, which actually sits lower in the ground, gives us an opportunity and a precedent to go to the same height to build either a block of flats or some houses. Now the problem is, is where we are, this is considered outdoor public space or recreational space, sporting, play area, bowling green. But you can see it's hugely overgrown, hasn't been used for years, so we've got to try and justify how we can make use of that space versus losing what is effectively a usable space, even though it's not usable. So the guy I bought this whole site from saw huge amounts of value in this bowling green. He'd actually already tried two times prior for planning permission, and he'd had it refused at the plan and local planning office and refused at national appeal twice. So why did he fail where I can potentially succeed? Well, that's where we're gonna go through this project in a bit more detail. One of the ways I was able to negotiate such a good price on the pub was that I agreed to have an overage on this piece of land. So the guy wanted 300,000 for the whole site and I only wanted to pay 250. In the end, we agreed that we would pay 240,000 for the whole site. But when we got planning permission and when we commenced works, that's when we would pay him an additional 60,000 overage for the Bowling Green on its own. So the deal was stacked up, so we got a great deal to start with, but he gets a bit of a bonus should we get plan and permission. But it's not paid on plan and permission, it's paid on commencement of works. And there is a huge difference between the two, because for those experienced developers know that getting plan and permission is one thing, but getting the precondition uh, sign off and the site investigation to a point where you can stick a shovel in the ground can be up to a couple of years after that point. So it was hugely essential that we had the word and dictate that that overage was paid on commencement. 
So how am I going to get planning permission when the previous owner had failed twice at local level and national level? Well, one really simple way. The pub no longer needs to be a pub. We've actually already had conversations with planners that they don't need a pub in this area. One, it's hugely residential. They don't really want any commercial on this street. We're within 30 meters of another pub and within half a mile radius, there's six other pubs. So we tick a few other boxes about not removing this local community hub for people to congregate in and drink. So that in itself means that we can get plan and permission for the pub for residential. Now, if we get residential use on the pub first, it takes the requirement of the need of the bowling green for the pub out of the equation. So simple baby steps, plan and permission for the pub first, residential for the bowling green second, and we think either a block of flats or if not four terraced houses. Cool, so as you can see, quite a sad story, all this old play area and old doors. I mean, I must have took me like three or four attempts just to open this door before. Yeah, you can see that behind the uh, pubs, their kitchens, I mean, they're always in a bit of a sorry state. I mean, I don't know how people cooked in here, let alone at the food that was cooked in here. Straight away, you can see that we've got this separate access to what is effectively the upstairs flat. It's already, already residential, which is a huge thing to consider when you're buying commercial and pubs. Because if you can't get plan and permission to convert the commercial premises to residential, you can still always make use of the residential use upstairs, as long as you've got that all important separate access. It's really interesting because when I first came to this property, the owner told me about how much money he'd spent ripping all the walls out to make it open plan. I think that's the worst thing you could have done. This is an old school pub. It should have stayed a small little room. It's what people want. Now, from a development point of view, it proves quite a hard space to work with because even though there's a lot of space here, when you're thinking about living rooms and bedrooms and bathrooms and these sorts of things, you need window space. And that always proposed a problem for this area. Now, we've got a huge conservatory out that way, which gives us a hell of a lot of light. But a conservatory isn't a usable space in its current form. Now, with these old pubs, you sometimes can't show all of your cards straight away. When you're dealing with local planners, it's just what you have to deal with. So we always wanted to get three, maybe four flats out of this with two or three bedrooms in each because the idea is to convert this building to hold on to it. And we could put that foot forward with the planners. The problem is, is you might not get the planner that you like working with or they like working with you. And if they want, they can make things really difficult. They're a law to themselves. So you have to play a bit of a poker hand when you come to these sorts of planning applications. You don't put your best hand forward first you put a hand forward to try and expose what the other side is thinking or what they think of your hand. So the first thing that we put in for this property is gonna be a massive HMO. We know they don't want a massive HMO, like an eight or nine bedroom ensuite HMO, house of multiple occupancy. We can't get the parking for it. They don't want that type of tenant on this residential street, but we need to do that in order to ascertain if they want 100% residential or they want a mixed residential commercial unit. So we're gonna go in with a HMO and keep in part of it as a commercial. We'll just have to see how we get on. 